Good everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. Um, so today I'm going to talk about the second aspect of code refactoring. Uh, that's around logging and, and, and code duplication as well. Um, so in my previous episode, I talked about uh, how to refactor a class. And if you have a, um, a duplicate method, how to uh, shrink that to a single method so that you, you can reuse it in a different place. Um, so today I'm going to talk about uh, logging, right? So it's often um, noticed that I've often seen that, you know, the logging is very powerful. Some most of the companies I've worked with, uh, I've seen, uh, I mean, even I built custom logging, right? And some use logging frameworks. So for today's discussion, we're going to talk about a custom logger, uh, which is like a custom object and how we can use that to log it. But at the same time, I will also like to demonstrate uh, the code duplication uh, that happens and, I've, and based on real life scenario. So whatever I'm, I talk about, right, in this refactoring scenario, it's based on the real life production code I've seen over the course of time, right? So, so that uh, when you have an opportunity to look at this code, you know, you can say, aha, I've seen this code somewhere, right? So I can, uh, you know, fix it in this way, right? It's always good to um, uh, fix the code which you think can cause potential problem. Okay, so now one thing about the logging, right? You can always ask, you know, uh, is there a concept called too much of logging? Uh, if you ask me technically, yes, there there is something called too much of logging. So let me give you a very simple, simple example. Um, <clears throat> so this is something we uh, did yesterday or um, so I created two class, right? Uh, create a contact. So now imagine you um, you do something like this, right? Let me say. Um, so if we wanted to, so system.debug, you know, uh, so this is say ACC started, right? And so, and I can say, I'm just going to say, oh, come on. Um, object created, um, and then it's a. I have seen a, a code like this in a production, so I'm just giving you a context so that you know, um, so that you can decide if you really want this approach. But you know, name assigned. So, and so let me. Sh you can say. Yeah. account record inserted right so this is a very small uh, meta right so and if you want to do something like this right I mean this code is okay if you wanted to debug it right and if you wanted to if you are uh, if you are testing this code in their sandbox and if you wanted to for some reason um, I mean ideally you can uh, debug the code using uh, a Visual Studio Code uh, debugger. Uh, if you use the log file and debug it, which will help you identify problem. But for for whatever reason, if you decides to go this route, right, and decides to uh, use logging everywhere, that's fine. If you are using this kind of code in a sandbox to test it, but if you're going to deploy this code to production, it's not really very efficient way, in my opinion, because you have put the debug logs every single way, every you know, in every single line, and it has a potential impact on the performance. And it's not good to keep on writing to a log file, right? Okay, insert done, this done, that done, right? So you have to keep that into consideration. So this would uh, something I would call it as too much of logging. Now in this case, we only got like four or five lines, but imagine if your method is like, uh, you know, 30 lines of code. Uh, so yeah, it's it's not really very uh, efficient way of doing this. Okay, so that's one of the thing I wanted to mention. So by all means, if you wanted to do system dot debug for debug, yeah, it's great. It's, there's nothing wrong with that. But that being said. Uh, please do not uh, uh, check this code into production. But if you wanted to put at certain places, that's okay. That's not a problem. If you don't have a logger in place, if you don't have a custom object logging, if you're not using any other uh, third-party logging. So if you wanted to use system.debug, that's fine. Not a problem. Like I've used it here, it's okay. It's perfectly fine. Um, now, 
Um, one thing I just wanted to uh, mention that um, about since we talked about methods, right? Um, so please bear in mind that when you are creating a class, when you're creating a method, your method should not be too big, right? So for instance, I have a create account, right? Create account should only do anything to do with a create account or perhaps a login, right? But that's to do with an account. But it shouldn't be doing like, you know, other stuff, right? Your method should not be too big. You know, it's like, should not be like 200 lines of a code, right? Unless it's really, really needed. And even if it's needed, uh, just split it into sub methods, right? So that's the, another way I would suggest, right? Because it's easy to read, easy to debug. So that's one of the case, because if the method is too big, uh, you are most likely are going to experience more issues uh, going forward because if you wanted to do a code change, you might end up breaking something, right? So it's good to have a modular approach, right? So that's one thing. Okay, now I wanted to, uh, we have got a uh, something called a logger. It's something called um, all logs. So I'm just gonna show you a bad way first. Okay, this is something called all logs, so which has pretty much two fields. Which, which we are after. Uh, that's the type which actually records success or failure uh, or error. So, and this is the description, right? Which you're gonna use to insert the description. So now I'm gonna show you a bad, bad way of programming, which I've seen it. This is a real example of, you know, which I've uh, gathered in one of the org I've been uh, looking at recently. So I don't want it to name anything. These are NDA reasons, but uh, this is a, um, this is a kind of code I've seen, and this is it makes me wonder, uh, you know, how this is not failing, right? And so, okay, so let me demonstrate how it is. So this is all log. Okay, so now let's say, you know, wanted to uh, record this account ID, right? So what we can do, so so I wanted to record in a in a log, so I create a Error log, uh, so you know, log equals to new, yeah. And I'm gonna do uh, log dot, uh, let me see what's the description here. Um, description, okay. I'll show, I'll show you the potential issue, right? Um, uh, okay, account. Um, so this is, you can see there's something like that. Oh, come on. Sometimes, uh, I mean, I get annoyed working with Visual Studio Code and Ubuntu. Um, I'm not sure how it is with Mac, but in Windows it's okay. It's, it's pretty stable, but I don't do much programming in Windows. I mean, at work, yeah, I have to, but, uh, for most of my home stuff, I don't use Windows. I don't like Windows, so just, you know, whatever. Okay, so uh, create it. So that's great. And log dot description. Uh, no, no. Type. I don't know what's the type here. So let me copy paste the type here. So that to be. Um, so let me see. I have to look at the log type. Um, so what is it? Okay, it's going to be a success. Um, so, right, so this is great, fantastic, right? And now we're gonna do insert log, right? Now, I wanted to do the same for uh, failure as well. So in this case, we're gonna insert of system.debug. Now, we don't want system.debug, right? Because we are replacing with the logger. So, so this, now, uh, like I said, I'm showing you a bad way of programming, and we'll fix it. And this is, uh, you'll be surprised. And if you're looking at my code and saying, what the heck you're doing, right? So <laughs> that's exactly what I've said, what I, what I said. When I first saw this code, I said to my, you know, one of my coworkers, have you seen this code? You know, what the heck this is about? <laughs> you're like, oh, this is horrible, right? So. Uh, like I said, I'm not um, copying paste the exact code in production because for due to NDA reason, I can't 
leak out the secrets because you know obviously you got to respect that so it's something similar on that line i'm just going to try to demonstrate so okay so we are going to copy paste this code as well and because obviously i need for contact and so now as you can see um oh, no, not this one here sorry copy paste it too early it's like that's why i said don't get too excited um yeah contact so we're gonna do contact um where is it okay contact okay that is great and it's gonna copy paste this and you know what? I'm just gonna copy paste this. And it's the same. Yeah, and I got because like I said, we don't need a system.debug anymore. Um and so we'll say account. So I just wanted to say account. I or you can say um okay so um that looks okay to me uh let me see if I can save it if I can save it um so now if you're wondering what is this squiggly line right under insert that I've installed uh CLI scanner um, so I won't touch on that right now, uh, even though, you know, a CLS scanner is for static code analysis. If you don't know what static code analysis, I would highly encourage you to go online, uh, type Google PMD or, you know, CLI scanner, right? Uh, it's a great way to identify potential issues in the code. You can write your custom rules and there are uh, commercial static code analysis tool out there like Clayton. That's one of the tool and, you know, there are check marks and, you know, but I'm, I'm, I'm a bit biased. So I prefer uh, Clayton, but you know, that's my personal opinion, but you just check it out. So, um, okay. So, uh, that is, uh, this is one of the thing. Um, and this is one of the thing. Okay. So let me, uh, deploy this. And what we're going to do, we go go to the developer console and see what happens, right? If the logger works. Okay, it doesn't work for whatever reason, which is fantastic. Oh, sorry. I know why it didn't work. Okay. Now, first let me run it, and then we come back and have a chat about the potential issue with this code, right? I mean, if you're thinking what I'm thinking, yeah, hold on. We will get to that. Yeah. Um, so this is on all classes I brought. Close all, based on my previous demo. This is what I needed. Okay. So what we do? Um, I will create a create a contact. Um, create contact dot. Create contact. All right. That's that's fantastic, right? See, this is what the good thing I like about it. At times, um, so I'm just gonna say, not the first name, sorry. Uh, just let's put an interesting name, just say Lior, right? And it's gonna say, I'm just gonna say Muller, right? Um, okay, well, that's what I'm gonna say, Rothschild. I don't know if I spelled it correctly, if not, I'll uh, just consider that I made up a surname, so, yeah. Okay, country New Zealand. Yep, um, since we're dealing with New Zealand and Australia, in this case, so, account ID, right. So, we will see, where is the account? Account create. Um, account create dot... Oh no, what the heck? 
create an account. Um, and this is going to be interesting uh, because we are using a logger, right? Which is cool. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to work, but let's see. It's going to take a while. Okay. Seems like it did something behind the scene. So let's look at account uh, contact. Um, okay. So let's look at the contacts. Uh, okay. Lot styled, right? That's fantastic. Now let's look at the log file first, right? Um, all right. It should have something. So I am, well, I was going to do type and I'm just going to do description yeah uh, okay so account uh, created ugh, which is you know uh, looks like description is not so great but that's okay so you get the point so that's an opportunity to improve. So basically, it means uh, space. Okay, and uh, we mean a space. All right. Okay. Now, you might wonder. Oh, okay, this works. This looks great. Not really. Okay. Now look at the code and tell me what's the problem here. So, let's say I wanted to. I got you know uh, six different classes and all need logging. Yeah. So. If we go by this approach, right? So we have to see the code. It's a duplication of the code, right? In, you know, all log, all log. It's like we are creating every single place and we are duplicating a code pretty much everywhere, right? This is a code duplication. This is a code duplication. This is a code duplication. Now, the problem with the code duplication, imagine if someone goes and changed the name of the description to something else for whatever bizarre reason. And how many places you have to change, right? It's going to be a nightmare if you have, say, you know, in a hundred different places where you have to change this, uh, the log files, right? I have seen a code like this, right? Where a developer, you know, a written a code like this, right? In six different places. And I was like, what the f uh, freaking hell is this, right? <laughs> it just like, it, this is, you know, potential. And, and I looked at it. And I was like, what would the what was the person thinking in the first place, right? This is this the reason why I'm I was extremely annoyed because you know who are studied a computer science or programming, right? The first thing, you know, they would have learned that you know code duplication is the worst thing to do, right? It it is a potential technical debt. Now the, if the person didn't have a courtesy to even you know, you know, look at the best code practices that shows that the person is not passionate about programming at first place. Okay. And it's not that a per, it's, it's written by a person who's, you know, a fresh out of the uni. You know, like I always say, is if you're, if you're a grad, you know, making a mistake, that's fine. It's perfectly all right. You know, as long as you have, you have great attitude to learn. I have seen grads, you know, the young lads coming out of uni doing amazingly, you know, amazing programming. You know, they have so much of great attitude to learn. You know, I'm, I'm always happy to work with those kind of people, right? They are great to be around. You know, they're, you know, the perfect sample of future generation, what I would say, you know, because I mean, I'm not that old, but I'm saying, you know, someone who's starting out of uni, right? So compared to them, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm pretty much experienced. But, but I'm someone who's have like few years experience, like three years, four years, five years, six years experience and doing a code like this, it's it's not a great sign. I mean, you know, even it's not a great sign to that person because if that person comes, because what happens is right, you know, if some if that person do the same mistake, right, you know, some companies don't have patience, right, and they will say, what the heck? It's causing a uh, you know issue for the company. It's causing an issue for another person who's reviewing the code, right? So if you see a code like this, like this, right. Consider is an opportunity for you to improve it, right? Please do not say, oh, this code works, so I'm not interested to touch it. That is a bad attitude, absolutely bad attitude, right? So that means that you're not into programming. Go and find something else which you're passionate about, right? So that's always I tell to people. If you are, if you wanted to write like this code, software development is not for you. 
you know, I'm sorry, I hate to break this out to you, is not for you. Because if you haven't learned in four or five years' time, I don't think so. You're making enough effort to even look at, you know, go to Stack Overflow or to see what other people are doing, right? Uh, I, I'm, I mean, I'm guilty of that as well. When I started programming, like I said, right, I used to write bad code, horrible code. And my boss used to get extremely annoyed. Even he used to tell me, have you ever learned computer science? What the heck did you study in uni in the first place, right? So and I used to tell him, look, I don't have a computer science background, right? And... <laughs> But he said, doesn't matter, right? You should have an attitude to learn. And over the course of time, I improved, I improved. You know, I've been fortunate that I get to work with uh, fantastic mentors, right, who taught me. At the same time, they've been harsh on me, but when I look back, I've been grateful, right, for the time and energy they spent on me. So, you know, for ranting, so, you know, so I, so let's fix this one, okay? And... I'm not here to name and shame a developer because, like I said, I don't want to mention anything. I don't want to mention a company. I want to mention a place. But but this is not a good uh, way to. Um, so let's look at the logger. And now you can also be more innovative uh, in this logging case. Look, so let me say, I can say public uh, static void create logger. And you can say, um, string description uh, okay, string type and uh, log type. Yeah, oh, let's put a try, you know, exception ex. Uh, even though it's a logger, right? It's good to put on. What if the logger fails, right? So, yeah. So you have to put that into the exception handler. And one other thing, I also like to say that I understand I admire friend someone, but I've noticed that most of the people get into software development because they think money is great. And that's a wrong motivation to get into, right? If you're entering software development just because you think money is great, it's not really the case, though, anymore. I mean, you do make a lot of money if you're really good, but we suffer with the, you know, you know, there is always a question that get asked, you know, why, why is there a demand for a software developer? There is a demand for exceptionally talented developers. There is not a demand for uh, a bad developers. Like in New Zealand, we have a lot of demand for software developers on Salesforce site. But that being said, we have a demand for a quality one, not the bad ones, right? Bad ones, you know, you know, you, you can't survive long if you're if you if you don't have attitude to learn. That's that's all I'm saying. No matter how harsh it sounds, but at times you have to be, you know, upfront, right, and tell people, look, right, it's not working out, right? You better find something else. So. I mean, like I said, I'm I'm pretty straightforward guy. I don't beat around the bush. So people get offended. They do, right? Is that's your problem? So uh, sometimes it's not good to be politically correct all the time, but yeah, whatever. So um, this is how I'm gonna do this. Um, I'm not saying this is a great way to do it, but this is just one way. Yeah. You can innovate, and um, you can also use singleton pattern and put it into collection and, and insert at once, but that depends how you're going to approach this one, right? If you are want to do in a single transaction, write everything. If you have a 50 logs all going in a single transaction, use as a singleton pattern, do the insert at the later stage, right? Put into collection and then do that. So, yeah. Cool. This is great. Um, and so, so I was gonna do this, and I'm just gonna do get message. Okay. And it's gonna do error. All right. All right, 
so this is one thing you can do there's one thing right one way you can do um, and I'm gonna copy this now I'm gonna copy this and it's gonna okay so let me hold on this one and okay so it's gonna be this right this is the reason why and so this is now now you look at the code right now it's simplified okay and now I'm not saying that uh, you know, the, uh, this is the best way to write it. There, there, there are plenty of different ways, amazing ways, good ways to write code better than this one. But this is one way to simplify, right? So when I wanted to look at the best practice, so what I did, right, I'll give you one tip, right? If you're starting out a Salesforce developer, give you one tip. If you wanted to write a software development code in Salesforce, just don't jump on the code. Just go to Stack Overflow, look for the best practices people write, right? And try to imitate those practices and use it. Okay, so that's the advice I, want, I will tell you to anyone who is starting out in Salesforce development. Look elsewhere for the best practices, right? Go to Stack Overflow, uh, talk in a forum, you know, join a forum, and look at the way that people are writing code, right? That's that's important. It's just not only for the code, even for the configuration. If you're writing a flow, right? Look for the best flows. Like I've seen flows like with 50 elements, which is not a great practice, right? The flows you shouldn't be having more than 25 elements to begin with in a single flow. If 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 that's the case, you should split it into subflows, right? So such kind of things. And uh, I would highly encourage you to study design pattern, which is very important in my personal opinion. It helps you to write uh, object-oriented programming in a very efficient way, right? Because if you are not using Apex in a form of an object-oriented programming language like other like Java or, or .NET or small or small talk or you know Python, then you're just doing an injustice to the actual programming language itself, right? It, this is not a procedural language. It is an object-oriented programming language. So yeah, so I mean, this is why it frustrated me. You know, I'm not annoyed uh, with people um, who are new to programming. I'm annoyed at people who are experienced. Who, been, who claim that they have, you know, X number of years of experience and they still can't write a quality code, right? So, okay. Oh, yeah, sorry. Now, I was wondering what's happening. Let's deploy this first and we'll... And at the same time, I've been fortunate to work with, you know, one of the best programmers in the world, you know. You know, fortunately, you know, the place where I work at this stage, you know, we got amazing team, you know, great people, um, you know, so that's great. So that's that's kind of a place I really, you know, like to work because, you know, you get to learn from other people, right? I mean, I now there's a problem here. Okay, as usual, I always do this mistake. Oh yeah, now. Now we got an issue here. Hang on a second. What the heck? Let's see if this saved. Okay, that's all right. That worked because always a saving issue. And like I said, uh, it's always good to document the code. Please do not be a rogue programmer, right? <laughs> You know, I, I used to think that off when I started. It's good to be a great program, rogue program, right? You know, someone who can do crazy stuff. <laughs> That's It's not a Hollywood movie. Uh, so I know we are uh, spy agents, right? You just go and do this stuff and no documentation. That's not how it works in real life. So we're gonna say create logger. Um, so this is one thing. Right, so now 
as you can see there, I've simplified the code enough. Um, so this is a separate logo class and it can be used in their account and can be used as a connect as well, right? So that's one of the simple stuff. Simplify the code. Now uh, there's no code duplication. Now let's say if someone changes uh, description, right? You just have to change it one place, right? You don't have to change 100 place. So this is one of the thing. So if you have seen a code something like this, I would highly encourage you to, you know, take time. Probably, you know, I don't know about your business need or requirement and how the company your company works, but it, it always works to go and refactor the code, right? Because you have to think ahead of your time. You can't think, oh, it works now. What if it, you know, it breaks in the future, right? So please do not follow that stupid analogy what's going on in LinkedIn. If the code works, don't touch it. That's just a garbage. I just hate, I don't know who put such kind of stupid codes out there. If it is a, if, if you think the code is crap, it does work for now, but that's not an excuse for you not to fix it. If you are hesitant to fix it, I understand if it's extremely bad, and you know, you know, if you if you are if you are scared that if you wanted to, uh, if you fix it and you're gonna break it, right? Then I can understand. But think about a scenario if you've been asked to do a enhancement on that similar function, right? Then obviously you're gonna have to do extensive unit testing. So it's an opportunity. It's always an opportunity. Always, you know, uh, you know, my my mentor used to say that you know. When you touch a code, please leave it better than it was before, right? Please do not leave as such thinking, oh, it works. I don't want to deal with it. That's that's not a way to tackle a programming, right? So programming is, a, is like writing a story, right? When you see a bad story written, just go and fix it, right? That's how I look at it. And that's how I encourage you guys to do that. Let's make a Salesforce ecosystem an amazingly beautiful ecosystem where people come and write a perfect code, I mean, though there is no definition, though there is no such thing called perfect, but I mean, okay code where with less bugs, right? So, sorry, I rant enough today because, you know, I'm extremely passionate when it comes to core refactoring. The people who work with me know that very well. So, yeah, that being said, I hope you guys learned something today. If you are someone starting out, if you have questions, please do reach out to me at any time uh, using uh, YouTube. Right, so uh, have a great um, Saturday, guys. Take care.